things within the GoPro app? What, the, the lights? No, the Lube Cube is a separate app. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yo, turn off the music. Yeah, sorry. We are live. We're live? Yeah, we're, we're shooting right now. All right, cool. So we just get it going? Yeah, let's, uh, let's let her rip. All right, well. Oh, that's, that's... Oh, that's some delicious ginger tea. Cheers, cheers boys. Let's get a little cheers. Come on. Cheers. Boom. Successful, so, safe trip. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast, which is in video form on YouTube, also on iTunes. So everyone, thanks for being with us. Subscribe, review, all that good stuff if you're a fan. And I'm uh, excited to be here with a long, long-term subscriber. That is Brandon Pierce here. So really, really cool. I remember him uh, uh, communicating with him over a year ago via YouTube, via Amazon selling, that whole thing. He was one of the first members of my Amazon selling group and really cool and also you guys know the one and only Mitchell Millennial here yes sir your favorite Millennial Mitchell your favorite Millennial your favorite Millennial what's up guys and that's my Mitchell Millennial impression so we just got done with a two three day two day road trip that turned into three day so I want to go into that um, beautiful motorbike ride around uh, beautiful northern Vietnam um, we're gonna get to that, but before we do that, I want to let you guys know who these guys are, who I am, because you probably don't know. Uh, you're probably a new person. 90% of views on YouTube are non-subscribers. If you really? look at the stats, yeah, inter interesting. Most of my videos come up uh, in suggested, suggested videos. That's how most of my videos come up. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of how YouTube works. God bless YouTube. I'm here because of YouTube. Oh, and real quick on the subject of YouTube, my birthday is January 15th. I am 150 subscribers away. If you guys want to make my birthday, let's get that up to 1,000 before yeah. the 15th. Let's do it, man. Check out his channel. Um, it's about living abroad, creating content. That's what it's about. Living abroad and creating content. He's a, I, I describe him as a, a video geek uh, and Brandon as well, kind of a video nerd. And uh, so it's always good to hang out with uh, those type of People who also like to create content. Oh, and uh, and English teacher for all of those people who are looking to move to Asia yeah. and potentially teach English. That is uh, another feather that I occasionally add to my cap. Yes, exactly. So if you're interested in long-term travel or if you're looking into it, that's probably why, why you found this piece of content. Um, my channel has a lot about selling on Amazon. That's what I specifically do. And he specifically does the teach English abroad in Vietnam. So his, his uh, extended trip turned into an extended living abroad type trip. So we'll get to how I ended up here a little when I talk about myself, but we wanted to go ahead and introduce you guys to Mr. Pierce. So Brandon, please uh, TLDR, uh, give, us, uh, <laughs> give us some clip notes. Yeah, man, where are you from? How'd you get here? I'm from Texas. Texas. <laughs> the, whole, the running joke this week has been Texas accent, but he doesn't have a Texas I, accent. But. I have an accent that I can turn off and on uh, on a whim or whenever I feel like uh, telling a joke or something like that. So anyway, I'm from Austin, Texas. My name is uh, Brandon Pierce, and I am an entrepreneur, kind of. I mean, I make money in the, uh, the same way as a lot of other people do, and I know that Real entrepreneurs generally find their own path, but um, I use e-commerce, Amazon, uh, reselling, and that sort of thing to uh, to make money. And over the last few years, I've been self-employed and decided last year, after watching Riley's videos and a few others on YouTube, uh, also I, I watched some of uh, Mitchell Millennial's videos to, uh, to get the scoop on what's going down in Southeast Asia. I decided to come up here and uh, I first moved to Chiang Mai uh, as my first trip abroad from uh, the States. So that was a huge, huge achievement for someone like me, you know, from, from Texas and small town Texas at that. So yeah. Uh, that was just a couple months ago? That was a couple months ago. Yeah, I've been, I've been in uh, Chiang Mai for a little over three months and then I just decided when uh, he said he was going to go do a visa run, Riley was, uh, he said he was going to do a visa run. He, he said, would you like to come on an adventure? And I was like, yes, let's do this. 
So I uh, flew to Hanoi, met up with these guys, and uh, we decided yeah. to do a motorbike trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the end of the app. That was basically it. Uh, and he contacted me as well because you got a new camera. You're like, hey, let's film some stuff. I was like, awesome. I'm, I'm going to Vietnam. Like, do you want to film some stuff out there? Like, he's got a drone. Um, Brandon, he's really into film, and he wants to get into more of that. Um, yeah, the, the other thing that I found out about these guys that I think I was just mentioned is they were both what I call uh, debate nerds. Uh, they're both part of the debate team. High school and um, college. It's a, a respectful type of nerd. Uh, my my brother was in was in it, but that gives you kind of an idea of these guys. They're very uh, intellectual, very smart guys. So it's good good to hang out with smart guys. Uh, I think um, I think the best way to describe uh, Brandon and myself is uh, there's very few things that we are only a little bit into. If it's cryptocurrency, if it's mm film, if it's travel, anything, when we get into something, it's really a, a head first deep dive. And there's very little, there's very few things that we're just topically interested in. So when it comes to having a body of knowledge about a specific subject or in a specific area, um, I know at least for myself, and it, it seems very apparent from Brandon that if there is a specific subject that interests us, we have a lot that we have gone out of our way to learn about that specific subject. So yes. I know I can drone on and I'll go ahead and cut myself short there before I start doing drone so. Drone on, drone on. <laughs> drone on about drones. <laughs> yeah, so like we just went on a three day motorbike trip around Northern Vietnam and these guys both brought drones. They're like, we had two guys flying drones around. Like, so it was pretty cool. And two gimbals. That's right. Two yeah, two gimbal stabilizers, and these guys are just geeking out about their cameras and drones and stabilizers. And I'm just like, this is cool. This is a lot of this is going on my channel for free. I'm like, sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, this was my second motorbike trip around Vietnam. The first one was uh, down south. This is my first one up north. Mm -hmm. So definitely when you come to Hanoi I would definitely recommend even if it's just a two-day trip ride uh, take the four-hour five-hour drive to just either, get out of the city yeah either my chow or Sapa uh, there's a lot of places that you can go mm -hmm. um, I have some videos on my channel uh, at f everything from creating or building a great bike specifically for touring around Vietnam um, or places to go but if you're coming to Hanoi uh, Mei Chow, Sapa, Katba, Ning Bing um, are all like day to two day trips that you can do. Um, that being said, if you have never ridden a bike before, uh, it can be a little hairy. I would probably say that Ning Bing is the, the most new rider friendly trip that you can take mm. because there's like side farm roads that you can take most of the way. Yeah. Anyways, beautiful. If uh, I want to get this clear, it is safe. Um, first of all, it's safe in Vietnam. It's safe yeah. to be here if it's your first time. Like someone just uh, commented on our video that was New Year's Eve in Hanoi. Mm -hmm. They're like, I'm so excited to come out there. And a common question in the YouTube comments is like, is it safe? Just want to get that out first of all. It's safe. It's safe to travel the world. The world is safer than you think. To quote. Uh, the great Andrew Zimmern from Bizarre Foods mm -hmm. who has traveled to everywhere around the world and eaten the most dangerous looking of foods, you're gonna be okay, guys. Yeah, and I actually have a video uh, on my channel specifically talking about is Thailand safe for tourists? And just to kind of clear, just to clear something up about travel, about pickpockets, about, about venturing out of your comfort zone in general, most of the time when you hear horror stories or you hear experiences that people have had that have gone poorly when abroad, I hate to say this, but nine times out of 10, it's because you're intoxicated and mm. you either get in a fight or you're careless or you wander down an alley that you're not supposed to. And I've been living in Vietnam now almost eight months um, and uh, I have yet to feel unsafe drive-by sexual harassment here is a thing but if you're a, and we can dive into that on another subject um, a lot of times women will like if you're a attractive western woman walking around sometimes you'll have men that harass you but that's you're never in fear of assault um yeah usually if you're a, a, 
a female, usually you're traveling with someone else. Correct. And even if you're not, like, you're fine. And he said, you know, make sure you don't wander down an alley that right. you're not supposed to. And there really re is no alley that you're not supposed to go down. Mm -hmm. um, but the rule of thumb, anywhere in the world, I don't care if it's Seattle and you're in, like, the hood parts of Seattle. Or L.A. Yeah, Skid or around. L.A. or, or Texas. Texas or Austin, where he's from. If it's dark and at night and you're by yourself and you're in a street that's totally not very well lit, someone it, would say it's probably not the best place to be. Right. I would anywhere. like to clarify something, too. Mm -hmm. I, re I do think uh, travel abroad to Thailand, to Vietnam, anywhere else is dangerous. And here's why. I think it's dangerous for your comfort zone. I think you, I think there's fear that we all have and we, since we're afraid of things that are unknown, we think that things that are unknown yeah. are dangerous. And so you're going to think something's dangerous until you do it. So yeah. if you're on the fence about it, just, just come out to a Southeast Asian country or just go to the, leave your, your, your hometown if you've never left your hometown. Just do something. Get yourself mm -hmm. out of your comfort zone. Expand your, mm -hmm. your, uh, your, your comfort zone a little bit. And I promise you that once you have, you will have grown and you can never go back. Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's one thing that I think I've learned so much yeah, just from my short trip. Yeah, man, he was that, telling us all these great things. Yeah. I'm just, I just feel like uh, I came here with a lot of fear, a lot of apprehension. And then after 24 hours in Vietnam, I, I felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing. Up until a week and a half ago, I'd never been on a motorbike. And I just did. Oh, really? Only a yeah. week and a half ago in Chiang Mai? Yeah. You recently got it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I trained on a motorbike like a week before coming here. Oh, sweet. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And so, I, and so I got here, rented a motorbike, and I was riding through the mountains and through the mist and mud and rain and all that stuff. Oh, man. And it's just because I, I had to trust myself, get beyond the boundary of my own comfort zone, and grow. And that is more powerful an experience than you'll ever get from watching a video. Yeah. And just, I mean... I mean, just using common sense, right? That like, if you're on a motorbike for the first time, uh, don't drive faster than you feel comfortable driving or don't go on a trip alone, find friends. And if you are traveling Southeast Asia, there's so many Facebook groups and all of the time I will see, hey, I'm going on a trip to Ningbing. Hey, I'm going on a trip to Maicho. Does anyone want to, to ride along with me so that you do have companionship? And I saw that in Chiang Mai too. Right, and so just using common sense for stuff like that is significantly gonna decrease any risks that they're that they're that you may have you know realistically absolutely facebook groups and if you're backpacking around southeast asia you're gonna meet a hundred you're gonna get a hundred facebook friends at least from staying in hostels if uh, you do that which you probably will if you're backpacking mm -hmm. um it, the host it's just amazing mm -hmm. where we stayed was kind of like a guest house uh homestay homestay, yeah. homestay. yeah right homestays they call them and my chow and uh, met some awesome groups of travelers and everyone's like on their journey and it's just like when you meet you know travelers out here it's like everyone is on everyone is like lost and finding themselves at the same time yeah uh, mm -hmm. at the same, so everyone's in the same boat so it's an interesting uh interesting thing and talk and on the subject of finding ourselves riley uh you said you wanted to go ahead and give us a little introduction uh to yourself for those that might not know yeah yeah i was gonna say um if you're interested in long-term travel uh, my journey got started off on a just a two week visit to Thailand back in 2013. So after university, I just wanted to you know travel a little bit, take a trip. So I saved up some money, two weeks in Thailand. You know, like most people, just go to Phuket, go to Bangkok, uh, blah blah blah, do the normal trip. And then two weeks we got back and it was like, whoa! I don't want to. I don't want to leave. That was I was just getting used to it. And if it's your first time to Asia it's gonna be a week and a half or two weeks of culture shock where after yeah. a week, week and a half or two weeks, you're just gonna be uh, casually crossing the road and not like worrying about it. Casually knowing the currency, casually mm -hmm. saying, or casually, you know, ordering food and and just getting the vibe of it. Yeah. So I was like, that was way too short. So uh, me and Parker, who uh, went out there um, with, that was out here, uh, me now we're like okay let's just like do like a year out there we'll teach english we'll look into a job we'll find something we'll work at a resort or something and then so started watching youtube and um a major life hack that i talk about in a lot of my videos is we made the last minute decision to not sign up for cable tv 
in our studio apartment and hook up the uh, Apple TV to the, yep. to the to the big screen I've heard this. and uh, stream YouTube only. And uh, it's funny because I actually worked for Comcast and my job was to sell cable that. TV subscriptions. <laughs> and so I would have made like a commission <laughs> off myself, like $50 or something. And I was, we were just like, eh, no, nah, screw it. Is that $50 worth your future? <laughs> yeah, and so that decision, I remember like, moving into our apartment, and this is literally one bedroom apartment, I slept on the couch, and Parker slept in the room, which was separated by a divider, you know? So for one year, uh, our goal in that place was to get back to Thailand. We had like these big post-it notes on the wall, get back to Thailand, and the goal was like May 2014, but we ended up going October 2014, um, because we had an excuse, and that's another major key because you have to find some excuse to travel. It's not, it's not common for someone just to wake up and be like, I'm gonna go to Expedia and just... So yeah, our excuse was we started watching YouTube and we found out about a digital nomad conference after a long wormhole, you know, after we went down that long wormhole, found out about the, the uh, digital nomad conference going down in Chiang Mai, Thailand, October 2014. This was early 2014 that we found out about this, so we just put that on the calendar. We're like, we're gonna go to this and figure out what all these guys are doing, living the dream, living that life, um, all that. So, you know, we understood we had uh, we had the four hour work week in our possession at some period from our two week Thailand trip to, to then we came on the four hour work week somehow, you know, the universe just tends to bring it to you. And uh, so we were like, we understood the Tim Ferriss rule where you are the average of the five people that you hang out around with or you associate with most. So we're like, we gotta go to that conference, just be, see what all those guys are doing and rest is history. We went out yeah. there and we, we saved, up, uh, saved up about 10 grand US and uh, that was like gonna be six months of living expenses wow. to live in Chiang Mai, which you can live very good, a balanced lifestyle for a thousand bucks a month. You can do it for less than that. You can do it for 500 a month if you really want to bootstrap and, um, and go cheap. But uh, yeah, we, we had our, our own uh, drop shipping uh, websites, which were not making money. And then so we made a pivot like last minute to go into the Amazon selling private label, which is um, buying in wholesale in China, um, uh, rebranding it, um, and then selling it on Amazon FBA, importing it to Amazon. And so that's, yeah, we've been doing that for two years plus now. So that's, that's my extended travel journey. You know, you gotta, you gotta really want it and then figure out how to make it happen. So that's one, uh, one of two common methods for extended travel. And the other most common you see is just working abroad, uh, teaching English especially. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how did you stumble on your teaching English thing, and why did you come out to Southeast Asia? I remember in the uh, first place. So long story short, uh, in 2015, I uh, sh shattered my right arm, and I had to have almost a, like a complete reconstruction. Um, mm -hmm. Dislocated one bone, completely shattered the other. Two surgeries and a bone graft later, and I was sitting at my job, hyped up on weed brownies and hydrocodone, realizing yeah. that my yeah. <clears throat> realizing that my health was too finite to spend working for someone else and making someone else money. Uh, around that time, I was with a group of other entrepreneurs, and uh, I had a trip booked to Barcelona. On the flight to Barcelona, I read the four-hour work week. Wow. Had a horrendous trip in Barcelona. Uh, where the people I was with really just wanted to get drunk and go to clubs every night. We ended up waking up every day around three or four in the afternoon. Um, I didn't see much of the city, didn't get to photograph much of the city as I'd wanted to. Uh, on my second to last day there, I met a really, really pretty uh, American girl teaching English in Spain. And she'd been there for eight or nine months, loved living abroad. And uh, I spent the night with her, and the one thing that really, really stayed with me after meeting her is that, you know, if, if there's something that you're really focused on in life or something that you really, really enjoy, you don't need a lot of superfluous uh, material possessions to, to, to experience things that you enjoy. Mm. And uh, when I left that trip, uh, I left kind of 
with a, uh, an itch that needed to be scratched. Yeah, itchy feet. Yeah, and so as soon as I came back, uh, I had a, I had a whole, a whole bunch of Excel spreadsheets with like goals, timelines, uh, and just uh, things that I had indicators that I needed to hit to travel. Uh, the camera gear I wanted. Uh, I decided that I wanted to travel the U.S. photographing music festivals, and mm -hmm. I accepted an offer to photograph Hangout Fest in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Before, like three mm -hmm. months before I quit my job, uh, my job knew that I was going to quit, and I gave them like three months' notice that I was going to leave uh, to go do this. Um, photographed uh, Hangout Fest that turned into four months. It was supposed to be a one-month road trip, turned into four. Uh, visited friends all over the U.S., got to photograph Bonnaroo, ended up in, at a music festival up in rural Northern California. After that, went lived with my buddies up in Northern California for uh, six months doing the whole Northern California uh, cannabis industry thing. Mm -hmm. um, knew I was going to be leaving to Southeast Asia. Uh, Why Southeast Asia? Why Southeast Asia? Uh, inexpensive. And one of the bigger things is that the, I was aware of a big creator's visual, or by creators I mean like uh, visual content creators, so photo video creators who had gone to Southeast Asia. And, uh, and within, within a week of landing in Bangkok, I met uh, a good buddy of mine now, Brock in the world. Um, him and I did a motorcycle trip throughout Northern Thailand, uh, and we did motorcycle school together. And I met him via Instagram in Bangkok after being there for like four or five days. And it was like, oh, you do YouTube? Yeah, you do YouTube. And then we started wandering around Bangkok filming together. Nice. Um, got into Chiang Mai, because I had read how inexpensive it was, and I actually had an uncle that fought in the, uh, well, we're in Vietnam, so he fought in the American War, who was living in Chiang Mai, so I had a family member out there. Mm. Um, and uh, I was living in Chiang Mai for like th two or three weeks, and then I saw Riley doing a live stream there uh, before Song Kron. Oh. And then uh, <laughs> I ran into him at a uh, camp, co-working space. Yep. And it was like, I recognized that mustache, and I was like, you're the dude from YouTube. <laughs> and... Uh, Kind of the rest is history, right? Yeah, yeah. We were grinding there in camp, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> Talk about. I was at that point. I was doing like five videos a week. Um, I've been in Asia now eight or nine months. I've uploaded over, and I edit all my own stuff. And I did over a hundred videos in like eight and a half months. I think even more than that. Um, nice. More, so, and uh, met a Portuguese girl off Tinder who was visiting Chiang Mai. Was a designer. Her visa was running out, my visa was running out, and it was like, do you wanna to go to Cambodia? And her and I both were making money online. Like, Cambodia doesn't have the greatest uh, internet, situation. internet wanna infrastructure. Wanna to go to Lao? Lao doesn't have the greatest internet infrastructure. Do you wanna to go to Hanoi? Uh, we stopped talking a day after we got here. Oh, I remember that story, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> nice you're feeling the vibes yeah mm. yeah just uh it's super easy to teach english here mm -hmm. uh after being here for two weeks i had like three interviews had three job offers zero experience other than being western and having a college degree and yeah. uh, i have more videos about how easy it is and what like your initial startup cost would be from like zero to like making upwards of two to three thousand dollars a month teaching english Mm -hmm. on my channel mm -hmm. and that's on average working a 20 to 30 hour week at most oh wow so 20 to 30 hour uh job a week that can, can be two to three let's say 20 hours a week you can make two grand uh it's well it's average like between 20 and 25 an hour okay 20 so, to 25 an hour. so at my last job in the u.s i was making 1750 plus commission which was coming out to like 20 it came out to like 26 an hour 27 an hour but american cost of living being what it was i was paying 550 for rent i pay 200 for rent here mm -hmm. yeah 200 for rent yeah basic basic room 
and the cool thing about these Southeast Asian cities is you can live for 200 a month you can live for 150 a month and have just a basic room mm -hmm. you know it's got bathroom bed um, some houses have shared bathrooms but some are you know they're all different or you know you can spend 300, 600, 300 to 600 yeah 600 dollars a month like we are living in Bangkok and in a nice brand new apartment building a super nice studio or you can spend a thousand dollars a month and have a nice freaking penthouse or whatever yeah, you want like you know ball <laughs> and you can share it with buddies and if everyone wants to throw down 700 a month you can have like a three bedroom freaking penthouse on like on top of a nice apartment building so yeah you can have all mm -hmm. the spectrum of living um but the bottom cheap spectrum is what's unique so all these kind of startup entrepreneurs whether it's that or whether you're just looking for a live abroad experience yeah mm -hmm. that's what makes it so so uh, popular um so he's doing the teach english thing he's also doing um youtube youtube uh, and computer stuff yeah and i actually am now sh i'm actually getting clients to do video work the the person that we were staying with um wants to bring me back out there for a weekend and pay me between 100 and 150 bucks so i'll probably take a uh, friend or something along those lines and her and I'll go for a weekend and I'll have the weekend paid for plus some wham walking around money nice nice and uh, get to do I mean I take these trips anyway to go and create content for my YouTube channel so might as well get paid for it might as well get paid for it yeah <laughs> I uh, had another guy on the podcast uh, Steve Yallo who uh, also has stayed at multiple hotels and resorts for free because he did uh, basically drone videos for them. Mm -hmm. So if you do have a drone, mostly that's what hotels are looking for. Um, that drone type footage, that's what he told me. And I have videos on my channel specifically about like the legality of flying uh, mm -hmm. in different Asian countries, about what like the reality of it is, uh, where to and what paperwork you need to fly a drone in places. Um, that's actually, Brandon, you found that, right? Uh, uh, for the Vietnam thing? Yeah, well, yeah. I just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I created, I actually created a, a video on my YouTube channel. I've got a few videos up, but uh, I created a video specifically about registering a drone to fly in Thailand. Mm. Uh, because I, I just wanted to fly in Thailand. I didn't yeah. even know I was coming to Vietnam to fly. But, mm -hmm. I mean, there are regulations, right? Every country's going to have some sort of rules. They want to be involved. They want to know who's flying, why you're flying. They want you to. They want to be able to pinpoint your device, you know, in the sea of all the other devices. But honestly, if you are just not, if you're not obnoxious with your drone, mm. and you're like out in the, you know, in the woods somewhere or in the in the mountains or something, you can fly your drone. It's just chill. yeah. Just don't don't be obnoxious it's, with it. Ask permission if you're on property. Like there's there's some there's some things that you can do, but for the most part, you don't have to worry about it. Like don't don't overanalyze it and then get analysis paralysis and then not come out uh, with your drone just because you're afraid that you're going to get deported or that your drone's going to get confiscated. Do your due diligence, of course, but it's it's more chill than you think. Yeah, I mean, just kind of like whether or not a place is safe to visit. It's like use common sense with the drone, right? Like if you don't think it's a appropriate place to fly, it's probably not. Probably not appropriate place to fly. Uh, if you think it is an appropriate place to fly, think about that twice. And if it still seems like an appropriate place to fly, it's probably an appropriate yeah. place to fly. Yeah, it's pretty true. I've seen people fly drones all around Chiang Mai, blah, 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 blah. Uh, anyways, so Brandon, what are you uh, looking forward? What are you working on? What are you excited about? And uh, where are you traveling to next? What's going on? Okay, well... Um I'm gonna go back to uh, to Chiang Mai after a short stay in Bangkok, and then I'm working on some software for the cryptocurrency space um, in order to help investors uh, keep track of their coins mm -hmm. and their uh, without having to be logged into a, an exchange or an online wallet. And therefore, keeping their uh, it makes it safer to uh, to keep track of what your your funds are. Mm -hmm. um, the coins. Yeah, for your for your for those of you who are into yes, crypto yes, cryptocurrencies, that's what that's about. Um, I've also got another couple of private label products that I'm currently in design phase right now, working with a couple of partners on those. Uh, we'll see. I mean, there's just there's so many possibilities when you're around people who 
who want to grow and they want to succeed and they want to see you succeed, it's, it's so much easier to work, it's so much easier to flourish in that sort of environment. So um, the expats and nomads that I've met out in Southeast Asia, all, we all seem to have that spark. And, if, and, and one thing I, I'd, I'd like to kind of speak up about and something I think that Riley is definitely a testament to is that when you surround yourself with people who are focused mostly on online, right? Um, it makes it less of a zero sum game, right? Because you're dealing in the internet space, right? And the internet space is so big and so broad and so vast, right? It, it kind of takes that zero sum game aspect away from away from it, right? Where like it's it, there's less personal competition between people, right? Because Certainly. the internet is so big and is so broad. Yes. And yeah. uh, it's something that's almost a paradigm shift. Like I don't know about you guys, but coming, you know, coming to Southeast Asia and then aligning yourself with people that do create and do work online. It, it almost feels like there's a lack of rivalry, I want to say, because there's definitely competition, but like it's not, it's not like a, for me to succeed, you can't succeed. Right. It's more like, a, hey, I'm going to succeed at this, this space that I've mastered. You've mastered something else where you're dabbling or learning, whatever mm -hmm. you're doing, you're, mm -hmm. you're on this other path. Right. And just because I'm succeeding doesn't mean you can't. In fact, my success could like help you. Right. And hey, hey, do you want like, like Brandon and I were talking about a product that we might like that we might do together. Yeah. And it's just purely out of, it's a good idea. And we each bring something unique to the table. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that's one of the things I think that you really grow a lot from. Uh, when you go live abroad and surround yourself with other people who are doing something similar. Yeah, it's, it's an absolute paradigm shift uh, coming out here and being like, oh, okay, these guys actually work in Starbucks every day and their careers are just on their laptop. Like, what? How can that, how can they have a job inside of that? Yeah, uh, but like <laughs> it's like seeing it on the YouTube. Files are in the computer. Where are the files? <laughs> yeah, um, it's one thing you know seeing it on <laughs> blogs or YouTube, but like when you're actually living amongst you know dudes that just live such a chill lifestyle and uh, you know not working too hard, definitely working smart, but like it's just such a relaxed lifestyle. You know, just my there's pros and cons to it for sure, but my favorite things are just being able to work when I want uh, and take vacations when I want basically be able to take trips when I want um, be able to take uh, three day weekends whenever I want so to speak yeah let's let's actually talk about that let's talk about some of uh, let's talk about some of the our favorite things about living abroad some of the sure. favorite aspects or things that are unique about the living abroad experience you yeah go, so you go first Riley yeah living abroad had not not to do with the online work Right, just just living in a just whole being new in country. another country. Yeah, um, just literally being in another country is my favorite thing. <laughs> 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 just, uh, uh, literally, just waking up and uh, having a palm tree just makes you, you feel good, especially if you're from a place where there's no palm trees, like okay, Seattle. I'm, I'm from Los Angeles. So you're gonna so have palm it's, trees. It yeah. definitely has a different effect on that. <laughs> but like for me, growing Flat up more in palm the, trees. Uh, <laughs> the great Pacific Northwest, like just seeing a palm tree just like releases dopamine, like I swear. Um, so obviously the great weather, being able to try all these exotic foods. Um, I'm a foodie, you know, I've always loved food ever since a kid. Food has always excited me. Um, always loved watching, you know, like Andrew Zimmer, and I'll mention him again. Bizarre Foods, Travel yeah, Channel, Anthony that type Bourdain. Of stuff. Andrew Bourdain, exactly. Like uh, one of my aunts uh, was saying, like, are, are you gonna be the next Anthony Bourdain? I was like, Fr I could. Like, like that's the scary part. Uh, well, is I like, freaking could. And well, we just, yeah. I mean, we can. We'll talk about that experience. Uh, <laughs> we're in our twenties. Like, yeah. oh my god, it just blows my mind. I'm still so young. Uh, we're gonna look back at this and, and laugh one day, which is another cool part about creating content. And Brandon, for the for the newbie of living abroad of the group, yeah. uh, what are some of your favorite things about living abroad? Um, one of my favorite things is, and this has happened a few times where mm -hmm. I go to sleep and you know, I'm dreaming, and 
I'll, I'll, in my dream, I'll wake up in the dream and I'm at home, mm -hmm. you know, living in the States, living in Austin or wherever. Is that a dream or a nightmare? Shit! No, 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 say, that, damn, I thought that was real. <laughs> my like, dream is that was coming too. No, no, I, let me finish. So, so I'll have, I don't know if anyone else experiences this, but yeah, like if, yeah, you, if you're so used to something, it, it stays with you. And as someone who's new to living abroad, uh, it's so natural for me to still think that I live in Austin. So, you know, I'd go to sleep and dream that I'm in Austin and just like have a normal life in Austin. And then I wake up and then I'm like, oh wait, wait a minute. I'm in Thailand right now. Or yeah, yeah. I'm in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. How, did, how is this even possible? <laughs> yeah. And then it's just a big smile comes to my face because I mean, I, I was happy in Austin, you know, but I always wanted to do this. I always wanted to be somewhere new. I always wanted to experience uh, new cultures and, and see people from these mm -hmm. places and see how they live and how they interact with each other, mm -hmm. how they uh, how they feel about foreigners, how they feel about food, um, mm -hmm. the, the amount of respect they have for nature, for themselves, yeah. uh, for other people. It's just being able to experience that firsthand instead of seeing it in the news or reading about it in a book or watching it on YouTube. That's something that I, I absolutely love. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's sweet. My other favorite thing, I have to say, because this is my number two, mm -hmm. um, or maybe even my number one, is not having to shop for groceries and being able to eat at any local restaurant without even thinking about prices. So basically, this isn't true with any, every country in the, around the world, but for um, affordable countries, so to speak, mm -hmm. I love just being able to go eat there, eat there, eat there. Yeah, let's let's eat there, let's eat there. Not like when you're back in the States, like mm, that restaurant looks a little expensive and you're like, ah, 15 bucks, like it's not that, like I can do it, but is it worth it? In the back of your mind, you're just like, should I be eating this expensive I have to get a all reservation. Time? Like, like should, I, should I be meal prepping to save money? It's like in the back of your mind, you're like worrying kind of about the cost of your groceries and stuff. And here it's not worrying about money as far as it uh, comes to food. And I love about that. I love not having to, I mean, I've never been to one, uh, the one to cook for myself, so I love not never having to cook, <laughs> never having to shop for groceries. I used to hate going to Safeway back home and shopping for groceries and like wondering, wondering about like, okay, these avocados, okay, they're X dollars per pound. Like, is that cheap? Like, should, should I really be buying avocados? Is that worth it? Or am I just blowing my money? Because I want my tacos to be good. But just like all these like things, like keeping that like tight food budget. It's like, ah, that's so gone. That's gone in my new life. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a that, yeah that's, that's a lot same of, yeah, a lot of brain energy, energy out. Yes, I, I, I feel care of. I feel the same way. In fact, I I'll add to that. I like that there is no high fructose corn syrup. Pretty much, I haven't seen any high fructose corn syrup, and um, fast food restaurants are few and far between for the most part, and so they're you, usually more expensive. They are there, and that, it's that's the great thing. It's like the healthy food is actually cheaper. The healthy food, the stuff that's good for you, cheaper. Mm -hmm. The stuff that's bad for you, uh, that you kind of want to stay away from anyway, it's going to cost you more. So why would you want to eat there? Yeah, it's so, just more processed, more money. Right. So, so you'll find it all out here. If you do want to cook for yourself and uh, meal prep or do whatever, you'll find an abundance of fresh greens from the local markets and all the whole foods to, um, if you want that. But the other side of it is the, the globalized. You'll also find McDonald's. Burger King, Domino's, Pizza, all around Southeast Asia. So mm -hmm. it's really however you want to live, um, really anywhere in the world. The whole world yeah. is, is globalized. It's. Yeah. I just like that it's not your only choice. Yeah. Like, in, mm -hmm. like in America, it's like you go across the street and you see you know, a Burger King, and then right next to it's McDonald's, and oh, well, there's a Whataburger in Texas. There's, a, there's, there's something. There's always, mm -hmm. there's always a fast food restaurant, mm -hmm. and there's very few mom and pop, like real home cooking right there for you yeah but here in southeast asia it, yeah. it's everywhere and it's all good it's all different mm -hmm. and it's it's complex flavors it's good for you and it makes you feel good this the the kind of street food uh scene it's kind of like a it's a culture i describe it where you have the certain grandmas on you know every street corner or whatever and they're kind of cooking for the whole block and families will come and uh, sit down in Vietnam on the sidewalk and, and eat like with their family mm -hmm. and like certain grandmas cook for other families instead of every, every family cooking every night for their family if yeah. that makes sense so that kind of culture is uh, is cool and it's always affordable of course 
So, uh, Michel. Michel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, my favorite thing about living in South, yeah. or about living abroad. Um, uh, I think number one is going to be uh, making good friends or connecting with locals, right? Just because in Vietnam, I found that people are very open towards connecting on a deeper level with Westerners and and making just like real relationships with the locals that uh, that expose you to you know parts of a country that you wouldn't normally see um, you don't really have that kind of motivation to befriend strangers back in America right and exchange culture even though you know there might be big differences in culture in different parts of the US um, or even different parts of whatever country you're currently living in so I, I definitely would put that as, as kind of my number one. Uh, my number two, uh, I gotta, I gotta say, the ease of of creating, right? And this is something that we talked about before, um, off the record. You know, in America, you fly a drone. You have people complaining about, hey, don't fly a drone over my my property. You're invading my space, or you know if you walk down the street with a camera, there'll be shops that say, hey, don't film here. And you don't really have that in Southeast Asia. Like you more or less have people like, hey, hi, YouTube, YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it never feels like I'm trying to like sneak a camera yeah. somewhere. Yeah, it's chill. And, and for someone, and this is actually something that um, we can even go into kind of the next topic because it's something that Brandon and all of us talked about um, was that if you are a visual content creator, right? Someone who wants to get into photo, wants to get into video, painting, graphic design, whatever it is, you know, coming somewhere that's more open with that makes, not only is it encouraging, right? Like, oh, I want to go out and like videotape this and that, right? Which that's just practice mm -hmm. for your craft, right? But that's also, um, it's, it's, also like kind of liberating right like literally right now and we'll get a shot of this and like we'll put it riley should take an iphone picture of this but like we're literally in a cafe right now i've got uh two loom cubes shout mm -hmm. out to loom cube um <laughs> yeah man you we set got this up right? we got two loom cubes illuminating us we have a road video mic pro set up on the table we have a goat with a line in going to a, a gopro hero 5 black and everything's being powered externally and we literally have maybe 20% of this cafe that's we've Americanized or <laughs> however you want to put it. We've, um, we've converted into a studio. That we've like converted into a, a temporary studio to film this in. And, you know, we haven't been hassled yet. And there's no way that you could do this at any cafe in the States. There's no way we could get away with this. You just got to do it. And then if someone asks you to politely stop and yeah, politely then stop, you just, um, it's really ask do first beg for permission mm -hmm. later so you can't fool me again yeah uh so but brandon uh, because brandon's kind of new to living abroad um as as someone who's just kind of uh getting kind of pushed into this right mm -hmm. yeah how what have you gone through right as someone who's also a visual content creator moving out here what's what's this transition been like for you um well whenever Whenever I first developed my passion for, for filming for myself creatively, mm -hmm. I struggled trying to find interesting things to capture. And okay. it's because I've been surrounded by the same scenes, the same, uh, the same buildings, the, the same vistas, all of this, all exactly. the same. Everything yep. is the same. And it's not interesting. It's to not me interesting to me. Your brain has already mapped it. Yeah. My, my brain's always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's seen that already. And it's not true. Like, there's some there's some very interesting places you can go and see, uh, no matter where you are in the world. And I mean, if I spend enough time here, it'd be the same here. But after coming here, my it's like my brain sees that there's new stuff, and I'm a t I'm tuned into that. So I'm constantly like, oh, I gotta get my camera, I gotta film this. Oh, I have to get some some steady cam of this. This would look this would look great as you know the sweeping shot here. I need to fly my drone here and get that amazing footage of of uh, mist rolling over the mountains. Yeah. Cause we don't have mountains yeah. in Texas. Like 
all these things that I would have like if I lived here maybe you know for a long time I wouldn't see as as something I'd want to do or maybe capture but because I'm now in a different place everything is interesting to me and it it fuels me it, it gives me purpose to want to expand my craft and become better at it and create and be around creators mm -hmm. exactly it's like uh, it's like a kid in a candy shop yes. if you're a creative type person like all three of us are uh, and you're, you're, you're going to a new place that's interesting to you, you're just gonna be like, oh, oh my God, oh, photo, 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 da, 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 da. If you followed me on Snapchat, you know that I've been every day filming on Snapchat for three years straight, over three years straight, because uh, ever since October 2014. So three years and three months, I've had a Snapchat story every single day, and most recently moved over to Instagram story, but I'm just like, Every day, giddy, excited like a kid. Mm -hmm. Like when I came to Hanoi for the first time, um, every time you're in a new city, even though it's same, same, but different. So I've lived in Saigon for six months, and this is same, same, but different Saigon. And I'm still excited. Like every time I go down a new street, I'm like, oh, whoa, what new do I see here? And <laughs> mm -hmm. literally in Vietnam, it's kind of cheating though, because it is literally one of the most interesting streets you can just walk down. You'll see so many hilarious things. You'll see the grandpa like sleeping. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in a freaking <laughs> hammock in between two. Mo you know, you literally see people, um, the motorbike guys napping on, on their, their motorbikes motorbike. <laughs> with their like taking a nap yeah. on top of a motorbike, stood up like this, like just like mm -hmm. hilarious stuff like that. You'll see people driving a motorbike with like ten full size mattresses like oh stacked on the God, back of yeah. it. <laughs> in, Sa in Saigon, I saw like a full size refrigerator. Yep. Um, with one guy on the front and one guy in the back, like literally the most hilarious stuff you'll see out here in Southeast Asia. So uh, if you're a creative type person, it's going to be like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, no it, kidding. Yeah, it really is. Basically. Sorry, so, I'm actually filming for Instagram stories now. Gang, gang. I can't stop Instagram, <laughs> man. Like they say I'm addicted, but hey. You I'm know, not addicted. It, I'm it's a healthy, We all have our addictions. <laughs> we all have our addictions, you know. Uh, Cigarettes, uh, riding motorcycles, are they racing serving cars, you, serving you or, or hindering you? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the yeah. difference. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. As long as you're not uh, being self-destructive. Yeah, yeah, and uh, obviously social media is good. It's great to connect with people all around the world. Um, but I just saw like Gary Vee's post the other day. It was like, don't be worrying about the amount of likes. That you're getting on every post, as long as and you're not like, as long as you're not like being hypnotized or whatever, possessed by the amount of likes, which is totally not why any of us three are, mm -hmm. are into it. Um, to creating is totally a healthy thing. And that actually, this kind of is a perfect segue to talking about something that's been like an ongoing theme, uh, kind of throughout the trip, which is, you know, there are create like on especially on YouTube, there are creators, and then there's recorders. There's people that go somewhere to record their experiences, and then there's people that go places to create videos or visually pleasing videos about those experiences. And they're not necessarily mutually exclusive, but they're definitely different uh, perspectives, mindsets. How how would you how would you put it? Yeah, there, mindsets. Dude? I guess. Mindsets? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a uh, it's an you have a different eye if if. If, if you're out to create for the sake of creating, it really doesn't matter where you are. It's more just like uh, getting a, a base for for the videos that you're creating. You're not just saying, oh, hey, I'm here. Not every shot's got a person in it. Not every not every uh, thing is staged. Right. Some stuff is just like, I want this as B-roll. I'm gonna go get some B-roll right now. Right. And like, why would you get B-roll if you're, you know, if you're here to just record? Mm -hmm. No one wants to. No one wants B-roll if you're just recording. But if you're creating, it's like having that B-roll helps set the stage of what you're doing, where right. you're at, and can make the story more interesting. Right. And and just for perspective, Riley, do you have your camera with you? Uh, yeah, it's in my bag. But uh, where do you normally keep your camera, Riley? Yeah, in my pocket. Uh, Brandon, how much gear do you normally bring with you? Way too much. What's way too much? <laughs> um, one camera bag. A camera bag gimbal drone chargers batteries right. lenses brandon how much, cards brandon how much camera gear do i bring that or more i 
for anyone that knows what a Pelican case is, I have a Pelican 1510, which is the maximum carry-on limit size. I need more than that to fit the gear that I bring with me. I have a couple of videos about this. Um, I normally have an issue getting on airlines because they'll say one carry-on roll bag and then one like personal bag. And I have to tell, I have to explain to whoever it is in broken English that uh, I've got anywhere between ten to $15,000 of equipment with me and none of it's leaving my possession. And whatever I have to pay or whatever I have to do to bring it with me, I will do. Mm -hmm. And when I go somewhere, I go somewhere not caring so much about the experience outside of what can I make or what can I create, right? As a result. As a result of that trip, which is a different paradigm than what other people have. I can't fit my camera in my pocket. I wish I could fit my camera in my pocket. You know, there were several times. One day. There were several times while we were on I the trip. pockets. Where I was like, you know what? I really wish that I had a camera that I could fit in my pocket right now so I could just go and just record what's going on. Record instead your experiences. Of, yeah, instead of, instead of like having to park, take my camera out, assemble everything, get the st stabilizing shots, get the, the drone footage, you know, talk about why I'm getting it. Like there's... If I could just pull out a camera and just get it, sometimes that's preferable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's vlog sometimes cam. Totally yeah, vlog cam. Y'all should get y'all should get a vlog cam. Ever you know, since Casey and I started talking about it, Canon PowerShot G7X. I've had that same camera for two years, which is why I'm getting to the stage where I need to upgrade. Because we all want an upgrade with whatever we have. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you have the iPhone 11 for two years. You're gonna want the iPhone 12 in two years later. So I don't care what it is. We're just people are just like that. They just want an upgrade. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, Hanoi, what are some uh, Hanoi tips? What should we talk about next, guys? Uh, Let's do a live poll. Wait, shit, this isn't live. Um, what have, what have we not covered? Where where should we go? Uh, let's talk about. This um, podcast is brought to you by Loom Cubes. Click the link in the description where you can light any podcast situation. For, for real though, if anyone at Loom Cube is watching this, I've been talking to you guys for almost a year on IG. Hook a brother up with some accessories. Yeah, come on. We, like, we, we illuminated. No, like they, they're not distributed in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia sales rep. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Southeast Asia, yeah, yeah, market that. Shit, stick, well, uh, oh yeah, check the uh, description of this piece of content for the blog post that's going to clarify everything that we said, talk about visiting Hanoi, visiting Saigon, visiting Vietnam, mm -hmm. motorbike tips, living abroad trips, tips, filming while living abroad tips. Mm -hmm. So uh, blog post uh, in the description for clarification on all of this. So. Uh, are there any other uh, subjects or things that we want to touch on in regards to either uh, Vietnam motorcycle? Uh, maybe talk about um, the process of riding a motorcycle here, laws, licenses. Yeah, because uh, we definitely talked, or I talked to you guys about that. Do you have a video on that about on your channel? Um, I have some videos about. It. There's gonna be more videos explicitly talking about the the driving legality of it but long story short if you are going to be living in vietnam if you can afford a nicer motorcycle or anything over 150 cc's i totally suggest it for uh, a couple of reasons but one of them is the social aspect of it riley talks about befriending locals all over the time on his channel and any excuse or any hack to uh, get in with a group of friends. Right. Yeah. And uh, for me, at least, I was living here for like two or three months. And I had a, one or two Vietnamese friends. Um, but the moment I got a, a nicer right, motorcycle, uh, big bike, or as they would call it in Thailand, big bike, um, my group of local friends exploded. Because if you have a nicer motorcycle in Vietnam and you are Vietnamese, you probably have money and that directly correlates to education and that directly relates to how much English you speak. And because of that, uh, at, like immediately after buying my motorcycle, I went from having like one or two Vietnamese friends to having 
So my hands full. Like, like I I have as many Vietnamese friends as I could ever ask for, and on top of that, you know, nine times out of ten, when I when I pull up to a mechanic or something like that, and I see nicer bikes, the people there speak English, and they naturally have interest in Westerners and Americans, and so having having that just facilitates creating these relationships that are not like these surface level, oh, where are you from, blah, blah, blah. It's like, hey, let's go for a motorcycle ride together. Hey, tell me about your bike. Hey, how did you come into motorcycles? And those are relationships, at least for me, that, that make me, that have made me stay in Vietnam, to be completely frank. Yeah, that's totally a nice tip. And uh, I'm gonna get there soon. Get to <laughs> get to big bike level. I, I will tell you, living out in Southeast Asia, uh, riding just a regular, uh, regular motorbike, or so to speak, or a scooter, um, is one of my favorite parts of living out here. I'm new to two wheel life uh, mm -hmm. out here, uh, and I love it. And these motorbike trips are my favorite thing to do. Uh, I love them. So whether you're in uh, going to Chiang Mai, I would recommend the four or five hour drive to Pai. Mm -hmm. Or whether you're in Hanoi, I'd recommend the four or five hour to uh, Mai Chau where we went uh, yesterday. and Or or Sapa, or any of these four or five hour one day rides. Mm -hmm. And then stay where you get there for a night or two. Absolutely mm -hmm. such amazing uh, geography out here. And like Northern Vietnam is famous for being like some of the most beautiful highways in the road. Oh yeah. Like, or in the world. It's... Uh, absolutely stunning so if you haven't already uh, check out the amazing drone footage that you guys uh, shot the amazing videos that you guys uh, shot and edited um, check the description for that stuff mm -hmm. but um, let's yeah. see are, are there any other subjects that we might have started that we fully didn't flush out maybe we talked about things that we love living abroad things that we maybe dislike yeah um, my well I've talked about this on my channel before so I guess what's your what's your number one uh, uh, dislike uh, downside? I guess to living abroad. Um, so for me, I've got I've got two, right? And uh, and they're gonna sound like almost comical because of how like somewhat insignificant they may be. Uh, number one is I really miss live music. <laughs> um, I know I know Riley misses that too. He's smiling because last time I saw him. We went to see, uh, uh, we went to go uh, see DJ Who Kid. Yeah. Rap, rap concerts uh, yeah. are non-existent out here, basically. Mm -hmm. And we, we, are, we happen to be pretty hardcore hip hop heads, American style. We should, and have, so we should, we should have a podcast where we carbon. just talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, like I, the music. We need to have a hip hop head podcast. Yeah. Um, and then but, num yeah. number two for me is going to be availability of products. I mentioned it before. Loom cubes are not. If you're a tech nerd, that's big. Just, that's or just like fun. stuff, like normal stuff. It's just is easy to find. Yeah, but and like just something a specific pain. charger for your freaking Nikon. This, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah. Um, but or, they still do have that. But on they still chemistry. have that. You yeah. just have to find. You just have to find. It's not that they don't exist. It's, it's just, just you just have to type on Google and find Facebook. out. We. In the big picture, we have it so easy these days. We yeah, have freaking, like, we have the Oracle in our pockets at any yeah. time. But like I said, it seems comical because it's like concerts and then like finding products are yeah. the things that are like the biggest <laughs> downsides for me. Uh, for me, it's uh, just not being around your uh, all your best friends. Not being, I'm, yes. I'm very lucky to have came out here in the first place with one of my best friends. Um, but uh, to be around your whole crew, to not be around your whole crew um, week in, week out, and your family too, as well. Uh, I go back every summer for a month, but um, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna s agree with you there. Like the hardest thing is, you know, I know that I have a lot of uh, friends and, and family that love and miss me back home. And uh, I, I get to talk to them via social media. Uh, and I make a lot of my content, you know, my videos and everything for them specifically, just yeah. to show, first of all, that I'm alive and then I'm enjoying myself, I'm safe, and um, mm -hmm. to also expose a little bit of the truth of what it's like to live out here. But mm -hmm. the downsides are that, you know, I'm still half a world away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's nothing I can do about it. I can't just like, I, I can't even call them sometimes because I'm 12 hours, 13 hours difference in time. So when I'm awake and I wanna like, I feel like, oh, I wanna call this person, they're sleeping. 
mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or yeah. if they would want to call me, it's like we have to arrange something. So it's 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 difficult to stay in touch, uh, and that's one of the the hardest things. But surface level, surface level. It's... One thing I really dislike the currencies just how different they are and having to like memorize things and change things and specifically i'm not a fan of vietnamese currency if there was only this entire, entire this entire if there was time. only a digital de <laughs> decentralized maybe that's a, a subject for a different time um i think but uh those are the things that annoy us and they're they're pretty insignificant I love Vietnamese currency because there's no change. Yeah. And you can, it's only dollar bills and it's genius. Dollar, dollar Everyone bills, hates yeah. change. Vietnam got rid of all coins and um, they changed. But not alt coins. No. Not, not alt coins. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are so uh, annoying. So I actually, I don't even have a wallet and I have this phone wallet and I can fit all my money. This is like 200 bucks basically in here. So. Yeah, but that's that's such a small thing. Like mm -hmm. w a after a week, you get used to the currency values. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so it's very very surface level. Yeah, it's vanity. I don't care. It's, being it's, away from yeah, being away from family and and yeah. friends. That's that's definitely the hardest. But the flip side of that is this is the easiest to stay in communication. The easiest time in history because we have all these social medias and mm -hmm. we have Skype and we have the freaking internet and. I can run my business with this and this. And uh, mm -hmm. anyways, um, he has tons of videos on his channel. His channel is also linked below. Some beautiful cinematic stuff coming from Southeast Asia. Uh, if you're curious about, curious about the dating scene, he's got a video about uh, the Tinder uh, situation out here. And he's if you'd like to videos. see more, because I don't know how much people want to hear about he dating. He likes to talk about Tinder. I love <laughs> I absolutely love the dating scene out here. We can talk about that. On he's, a, he's, he's telling us about it all day. So yeah, he's got some tips for you guys or whatever the fuck. Uh, not tips, just not tips, just yeah, experience. Cause well, no, that well, it, it just, is a, just tips. It's a frequently asked question in the YouTube comments. <laughs> People are wondering, um, you know, about the dating scene or whatever. So if I you'd like it. to see videos on that comment below and I will make videos on my channel specifically about uh, dating Western women, dating local women, uh, dating multiple women. I'm interested, Whatever you'd like in, to I'm know. interested in that as well. Yeah. I would like to learn about how Tinder works in uh, Southeast Asia. I haven't really utilized. Is there is that. there a Tinder hack? I'll I'll, I'll have him say, oh. I'll save it for your video. Yeah. But is there a Tinder hack? Uh, he I know he's been successful with uh, everything he that he just said. So, um, yeah. Uh, I think. That is going to wrap it up for yeah. the podcast. Wrap it up. Um, wrap it up. Until next time, it's Brandon. It's what's the name of your channel? Uh, just my name, Brandon Pierce, for now. Maybe we change that. We'll probably but change it. Brandon Pierce. Brandon Danger Pierce. Riley. <laughs> Riley, Mr. Living That Life. You want to plug your social media? Um, Mr. Living That Life. And you can find me on Mitchell Millennial. I got a Facebook group called Travel Tubers, which is literally about traveling and creating YouTube content. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, and Mitchell Millennial everywhere else. Uh, Heck yeah. Till next time, like, comment, subscribe, oh, share. Oh, you got to come out with a new outro. Oh. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to tell him earlier, but you got to get a new like, comment, subscribe, because everyone does that. Everyone's like, like, comment, subscribe. Okay, okay, okay. On the fly, you ready for this one? Yeah. If you hated the video, give it a thumbs down. You probably didn't, so share it with someone who might like it. Till next time, I'm Mitchell Millennial, signing out. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>